Hello everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Asma Ashamri, and in this video, I'll be talking about pharmacology 101. Okay, so if we ask ourselves, what does pharmacology mean? Pharmacology is the study of biological effects in your body by chemicals. In other words, it means the study of drugs. There are two kinds of pharmacology. They, there is a clinical pharmacology, and it's the study of drugs effect on human beings. So they will be testing the drugs on healthy volunteer, or it could be patients. The next kind is experimental pharmacology. And this one is studying the effect of drugs and laboratory animals. So they will be testing the drug on a part of the animal or on the whole body of the animal. Let's talk about drugs and medicine. What's the difference? Drugs or any substance absorbed into your body and make a change. Coffee, for example. We always heard people saying, I can't wake up in the morning without a cup of coffee, right? So caffeine can alert your brain and act on your central nervous system stimulate, which makes you awake and less tired. Medicines are any substance that used in the treatment, cure, and diagnosis of diseases. For example, oxygen. We can use oxygen to treat and cure and diagnose pulmonary diseases. After we know what's the difference between drugs and medicine, and both of them have an effect on our bodies, so the question here will be, can we call drugs medicine? The answer will be yes if they are used in a proper dosages. Okay, um, let's talk about drugs nomenclature. All drugs have three names. The first name is chemical name, which is based on the chemical structure of the drug. The second name is genetic name, which is usually a short cuff of the chemical name. A third name is a brand name, which is the name that has been given by the company that marks the drug. Now, if we ask ourselves what name would be to prescribe the drug, the answer for this question is the genetic name. So if we want to prescribe a drug for a patient, we will go by the genetic name. Okay, um, let's take an example for um, clarification. So the Benadryl drug, it's an allergy drug for antihistamine. Um, the brand name here would be the Benadryl. This is the company name. And the genetic name would be the diphenhydramine hydrochloride. So this is our genetic name. And our chemical name, we might not find it in the, uh, the packet of the drug, but we may uh, look for it since the, uh, the genetic name is a short cut of the chemical name. So we may search for it if we don't know, or we may find it on the um, the piece of paper, the, um, the information paper of the drug. Uh, we may find sometimes the chemical name. And now let's move on to what makes a drug an idle drug. There is six characteristics that makes a drug an idle drug. The first one is selective. Selective is the drug has to be work on one organ and only one organ. So for example, if the drug is affecting the heart, it should not affect any other organ. For example, it should not affect the lungs and the heart. It should be only for the heart. The second characteristic is it has to have a minimum adverse effect. 
should not have a lot of adverse effect. So the minimum uh, is the the minimum the minimum is great, right? Then the third characteristic is temporary. It should not change the function of the organ forever. So when the drug affect the uh, body should be temporary. Okay, and the fourth one is highly effective. So when uh, a patient get a drug, it should be highly effective with a low doses. So the patient don't have to take it many times a day to uh, get effective. The drug has to be effective at a low dose. The fifth one is it should be controllable. Whenever the drug is more controllable, this is an ideal drug. The last one is a convenient dosing. So the drug should be at least given to the patient once or twice a day. Um, if not, that may not be an ideal drug. Now, what about the drug's action? How does it happen? The drug's actions happen in three ways. The first one is acting on a somatic and psychic function. So the uh, drugs first should act on either the somatic or the psychic functions of a body. The second one is correction of deficiency. So if you're, for example, having an iron deficiency, the drug should be uh, correcting this deficiency. Okay, and the third one is a toxic action and pathogenic microorganism. So these are the three action that could uh, the drug could do to your body or happen in your body. Okay, after we know the drug's actions, we also need to know how drugs interact with the receptors into our body. So we know that um, drugs um, act on chemical forces, or we call it chemical bonds. There are three chemical bonds. The first one is covalent bond. And a covalent bond is a very strong bond, in many cases, not reversible, under biological conditions. The next one is electrostatic attraction or electrostatic bond. It is, it's weaker than the covalent bond, but it's the one that's uh, most common than the covalent bond, even when it's uh, weaker than it. The last one is the hydrophobic. Hydrophobic usually a very weak and probably important in the interaction of a highly lipid soluble drugs. For example, drugs that bind through weak bonds to the receptors are generally selective. So the selective drugs are usually happen in a hydrophobic bonds to the receptors in your body. Now, in some cases, we may uh, know that the drug's action in our body does not make an effect or does not make the effect that we want it to be. And that's a turn to the drug's properties. And there is three drug's properties for uh, the drug's action to be effective. The first one is the molecular size of the drug should not be very uh, small or very large. It varies from uh, 100 megawatt to 1,000 megawatt. Larger than 1,000, it, it could not be uh, dissolving or diffusing between the body organs. The second one is the molecular weight. The molecular weight of the drug should not be uh, larger than a thousand, like the size, to be able to be effective in our in the uh, body. The third one is the molecular shape. It should be a unique shape to bind to the receptors in the body. 
for every drug we need to uh, classified so we classify drugs based on the chemical structure of the molecular of the drug and the location of action where does the uh, drug action happened in the body okay and the purpose of medication what is the purpose of the drug? For example, uh, cardiac glycosides, the, medica the medical use for it is to uh, congestive heart failure and for a cardiac arrhythmics. So this is the purpose of the drug. We need to know every drug, what is the purpose of it? And the name of the plant. The, uh, the plant that we uh, uh, took the drug from it or we um, uh, make the drug from the plant. So these are four, th four classifications for drug. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, hope, I hope this video is very helpful for you. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions in the comment below. And uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please do. And you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram.